Mention has been made on a primitive style take down bow in the book, the traditional Boris Bible, volume 2, page 266, which reads thus. Make the splices 6 inch long and blunt ended, then wrap with strong line. Such wrapped splices are strong, and according to Baker, they should just fine. When a bow is built and tested exactly as written, however, two limbs persistently pivoted side to side and maintaining consistent tension throughout wrapping was none but futile effort. Only when the bow is assembled with an additional support, which I call the stiffener plate, this takedown system was rendered functional. This stiffener plate, a 2mm thick, fully heat treated steel spring, is a key component for this assembly. I have built and tested various materials of varying thickness for this application. Thickness exceeding 2mm felt too thick in the bow hand, while 2mm brass plate helplessly bent, notwithstanding the immense torsion from the twist of the bow limbs. The bow was built from 50 by 20 red oak board, and the handle splices were successfully built with this dimension. The round dip at the tip prevents the cord wrappings from slipping off. One meter of length, to my very subjective opinion, is the maximum length for sticks to be comfortably carried in the field, and therefore the longest top limb was set to this exact length. The nature of this takedown system inevitably leads to a bow with positive tiller, top limb being placed about half an inch forward than the bottom limb. For this reason, the bottom limb was intentionally built an inch shorter than the top limb for balance. This length results in a bow approximately 73 inches long. Three quarts, 3mm in diameter, are pre-wrapped on a stick, two of which are approximately 6 foot long and the other 8 foot long. The splices are held together with a stiffener plate added on the right side while extending the bow vertically. Arrow rests can optionally be added at this stage, which is a brass plate on top of which a piece of leather was attached using a pine pitch glue. Start by wrapping one of the short cords at the middle. The primary purpose of this middle wrap is temporarily hold all the parts down together before the actual assembly. Leaving the tail of two inches, put some and wrap over it once, then pull the end through this loop. Then check for alignments. The splices must be overlapped as much as the design allows for the best efficiency. The arrow rest must be located right below the strike plate, and the stiffener plate should be placed right in the center of the grip. Now wrap the other short cord edge in the top of the grip and the remaining longer one at the bottom in the same manner. Relatively longer cord edge is used to bind the bottom more securely as this junction is technically the only area where the limbs lever off from each other. The integrity of cord wrapping derives not from the uniform consecutive wraps but from localized haphazardly wrapped tight cluster. Also given equal string mass, wrapping dozen times with center string is more secure than wrapping once with a thicker string. The whole process looks and sounds pretty complicated, but doesn't really take me no more than 5 minutes to tie this bow. The bow is now fully assembled, however, there is one more step left for this particular bow, which is installing the cable backing. Long story short, I ventured to back this raw white wood board only with cable, which failed and later the bow is saved by covering the splinter with two layers of canvas and edible gelatin used for making jelly. The cable is strung, then turned towards the back of the bow. Toggle made out of 1mm brass sheet is used to turn and tighten it, then simply drops down into the handle. It must be made crystal clear that this cable backing is completely irrelevant with this takedown system presented in this video. The bow draws approximately 58 pounds at 28 inches. This bow does not have a string knot cut into the tip. Instead, a linen strut was tightly wrapped and formed into a ring, then saturated with pine pitch glue to stabilize. Now we're gonna shoot some stump with a blunt arrow. I'm gonna shoot that uh, the pine tree up ahead, about 15 yards away. This assembly, on the other hand, wrapping unreels itself in an instance as a bow spins in the hand. Built a dedicated bow bag, 
heavy canvas, completely handsome from 100% natural cotton fiber, which can accommodate up to two thick dambos of this kind. The idea of thick dambo itself is not a new discovery at all. However, it is my humble wish to provide an alternative ways of breaking a bow in half and putting it back together for those bowyers with only the most basic hand tools in hand, the crab one.